I have not done this sort of a press conference before. This is the first time I am as a doctor and talking on a subject which is new to me, yoga. But let me tell you the background of this study. A few years ago, uh, I thought a lot of people are talking about yoga. Yoga is another day, diabetes is another cholesterol is another day. And we doctors generally take, take it very lightly and say, no, no, what yoga? You take my medicine, do some walking. So just as a, I won't say tamasha, but just as a proof of concept study, we did a study in 2006 where we did some asanas in newly diagnosed patients. I'll show you the slide in a minute. And we found to our very big surprise that patients' blood sugar just dropped and patients were able to stop their tablets for diabetes. I'll show you the study. Then we did a second study, a bigger study, which I'm going to tell you today. And in between, between these two studies from Delhi, there was another study by Dr. Professor S. V. Madhu's group, which also showed yoga very, very beneficial. So the topic today is, is yoga a part of not working it? This is awesome. This is awesome. This is a problem. So it should yoga be told to be a part of diabetes treatment? I'm going to give you the answer yet. Yes, yoga is a part of diabetes. Just as you give insulin, you should teach all your patients yoga. That's my conclusion. Now let me start with this. Oh, sorry. Let me start with this study wherein we showed. This is a point. Okay. First of all, let me build up the story. Now the diabetes treatment in India is a very costly affair. This is a study which we did, published in the Journal of the Association of Prisons of India last year, where we looked at the cost of treatment of diabetes. And we took, because hospitalization is the costliest uh, you know, thing in diabetes. When a patient is hospitalized, bills just go up. So we took patients who had been admitted, about 368 of them. Most of them had been admitted for cataract surgery, or treatment of the retinopathy, for removing their leg or foot. Like that, you know, the kidneys were having some failure. And this was the study group of that particular study. And we found that patients who did not have any complication, group one, and we compared, compared that with patients who had two complicated, eye, kidney, foot, kidney, foot, eye, like that. So this was the second group. You can see that the number of days spent in the hospital was about six times more in people who had complications. Lab charges were three times more. This is the average. This is the mean. This is this is the range. This is the mean, and this is the range. So lab charges were three times. Medical consultations because you have to ask the nephrologist to come, this uh, you know cardiologist to come. Then you have some complications. So naturally the medical fees go gone up. Medicines are more because those with complications spend. They have to be given multiple drugs for blood pressure and all that. Hospital charges were six times more. Transportation charges were more. Total expenditure itself was about four times more among patients who had complications. And we took a, a previous two years expenditure, it was about definitely more. How did, how did we do the study? We took the hospital bills of these patients. We looked at all their bills and we gave them a questionnaire on how much money they spent for coming to the hospital and all that. So this was a study done and published. And how did the patients pay? This is the sad part of it. Most of them, to meet these expenses, they were actually taking their money from their bank account, personal savings, they were borrowing. Only about 7% were having some sort of a medical insurance. And only about 11% had some sort of a company reimbursement. It means about 18% is by company or insurance. The remaining, nearly 78, 80% is out of pocket expenses. So patients have to lift their purse or write a check and give it to the hospital. So this is a sad state of affairs because insurance companies are not covering all the diabetic complications. They are not giving some outpatient care. That's the need of the hour. The insurance companies must pay diabetic patients for outpatient treatment so that they will not get admitted uh, with problems. Okay, so with that background, let me start the first study. We published in 2006 where we looked at the effect of yoga asanas in controlling diabetes in patients who had been recently detected with diabetes. They said, Doc, I have been detected with diabetes last month. I have come to you for treatment. These were the patients. And what we did was, we compared yoga with metformin. I was quite bold. I told my patients, 
Metformin is the main drug for diabetes. It's called glycophage, glycomet. Without metformin, we will not send the patients out of our rooms. But I was bold enough to tell the patients, I got their written consent, that I'm not going to put you on metformin for three months. Your blood sugar is quite high, but I'm going to teach you yoga, you will do exercise, and you will control your diet. That was one group. The second group was the patients who took metformin, the usual. When the patients come to us, we put them on metformin and uh, so on. Sorry. So we had two groups of patients. The one which were on yoga and exercise and diet control. The other were on metformin and usual, with exercise not, but no yoga. So we, it was a head-to-head -head comparison between yoga and metformin. I wanted to prove these yoga experts wrong, saying that my metformin is better than your yoga. But see what happened. I had to eat my words because I found metformin yoga is as effective as metformin. This is the HOMA. This is called a test for insulin resistance in diabetes. What happens? Insulin is there in the body, but it is not working properly because of more fat in the abdomen, the abdominal fat. Insulin is there in the body, it is not working. So that is called insulin resistance. What these children have is type 1 diabetes. They don't have any insulin in the body. They are injecting insulin right through. They have inject three times a day, four times a day. They can't skip insulin in one day. If they skip one day, they'll have their problem. They'll be hospitalized. So this is a different. This is a minority in our country. But majority is type 2. Most of the Indians are very fat, a lot of tummy and all that. So the insulin is not working and that is a test which we do called HOMA to see how insulin resistance is there. You can see that the insulin resistance in the yoga group, you can see it falling. Just as metformin, you see equal. In fact in metformin one of the is went up actually. So you can see in the, the yoga group, in every patient the insulin resistance improved without taking metformin. So the conclusion of the study was, my conclusion was, yoga is as good as metformin. That was my concluding statement in that paper which we published. They lost weight. With those who practiced yoga uh, lost weight, you can see. Their HBLC improved. I have not shown that data. And for nearly one and a half years, none of these patients who were on yoga took any medicine. And then what happened after one and a half years? They stopped doing yoga. They blood sugars went up, I had to put them on tablets. So it's only when they stopped doing yoga, it went up. So this is a clear-cut evidence that yoga works in diabetes, in type 2. Not maybe to be helpful for them, but definitely in type 2 diabetes. Then what happened was, because we were so enthusiastic after the first study, I told my research team, let's do one more study, a bigger study. So we did about 300 patients, again newly diagnosed patients. We took them and again, this time we did not divide them into yoga with tablets. We gave tablets to both the groups. But in one group, there was yoga plus the, 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 the tablets. So this is the main study. Now, what happens in, your, in type 2 diabetes? In these children, due to some virus, the beta cells which produce insulin gets knocked off. And they don't, they're not able to produce insulin. So they have to inject insulin. Insulin is now available only as an injection. There's good news for them. An Indian company has already developed a spray for giving insulin. And it's going to come into the Indian market maybe in one year's time. So they don't have to inject themselves. That's a different matter. But we're talking about here type 2 diabetes, where unhealthy diet pattern, patients don't do any exercise at all, and they develop what is called insulin resistance. This insulin resistance starts from childhood because of school children being very obese. In our Chennai Slim and Fit program, we showed that about 23, 26% of CBSC children in Chennai city were overweight and 13.5% were obese. Similarly, the drop in blood sugars were also much more, the mean, I'm talking about the mean, the average is much more with, when you do yoga, the blood sugars, than when you do tablets alone. Now, this paper was published two months ago in the International Journal of Diabetes in the Developing Countries. It's written in the press note. So this is an official journal of our RSSDA. RSSDA is the India's largest organization for diabetes called Research Society for Study of Diabetes in India. This is the main diabetic association of India. And this is their journal. So they, it's a peer-reviewed journal. So they send it to yoga experts and all that. People have done work on yoga. It got published. 
And this important point is, the study highlights that in group two, about 12 cases who are practicing yoga regularly did not require medication at the end of the study. This is what we showed in the first study also. For nearly one and a half years, we were able to pull out without tablets. And until the patients stopped doing yoga, then the blood sugars went up and I had to put them on tablets. Same thing here also, we found that many cases were able to go off tablets. They were newly diagnosed, so just controlling diet and all that, yoga, it came, you know, they were able to manage without tablets. Now this is another study from India, which is a properly done study. There are a couple of other studies, but not peer reviewed. But this is a good study from Dr. S. V. Madhu, who is the current president of the RSSBI from Delhi. S. V. Madhu uh, works at the All India Institute of Medical Science. This is another paper from India, which has shown, again, a very positive impact of yoga and diabetes. This is by Savita Singh and S. V. Madhu. And they also showed, similarly, the weight comes down. The group one is a yoga group yoga group, which is the weight reduction before and after, then the patients who took only tablets. And you can see that their blood sugars also, triglyceride also, LDL also, coming down drastically uh, with the yoga group in group one is a group yoga group. They have seen significant reduction in blood sugar, triglyceride, LDL. We also did another study looking at insulin levels of the body. Insulin resistance, what I told you. This paper is there online. They also showed that the insulin levels in the body actually come down by doing yoga. So I think that's my last slide. Yeah, so let me put it in a nutshell in one next one minute again. So I showed you the first slide that the cost of diabetes care in India is very high. And that's because of medicines, because of uh, frequent hospitalization and so on. The medicines in diabetes are very costly and especially the older drugs are not working now, what we call sulfonylurea and metformin. We have to put the patients on a group of drugs called gliptins. Each tablet is 40 rupees. And then we have to put them on insulin. Again, the cost goes up. Insulin, the older insulins don't work, so we have 72 hours active insulin. Each vial is 1,600 rupees. Costly again. We have to put everybody on a cholesterol medicine. High dose of cholesterol tablet, blood pressure tablet, cost again goes up. So the bill, if you see outpatient treatment for a diabetic, will come to easily 4,000, 5,000 rupees. If somebody is earning 8,000 rupees, half his amount is gone on spending for medicines for diabetes. If he doesn't take, he'll end up in hospitalization, he'll lose his leg or he'll lose his feet. So it's a very, very dicey situation. We have such a big population in India. If only people do a yoga and exercise, of course, they can reduce their medication, reduce their bills, win down their blood sugar easily. So I think my first slide was, should yoga be a part of diabetes treatment? I told you I'll give you the answer at the end, yes. I think yoga should be a part of diabetes treatment. After the first study, I set up in all our five centers across Chennai and Bangalore, I started free yoga service, no charge. Every patient is taught yoga, free of cost, whether he likes it or not. Some people say, no, no, I don't want yoga. You can't meet the consensus if you're not going to yoga class. So they go for yoga, and I believe most of them are.